All right, in today's lecture, we're going to just kind of go over a brief introduction and or overview of what DNA replication is all about. Now, remember that we talked about the very beginning of the semester, we said that DNA is going to go through that process of doubling during the S part of interface. When we have our G1, S, and G2. This is where we talked about in mitosis and or meiosis, we went from our 46 chromosomes magically to 92. How are we actually getting that to take place? If we go back to, we talked about Mendel and the fact of a karyotype, we have all those structures on our karyotype, our chromosomes, right? You get one from mom, you get one from dad. Those two, those two structures there, if I'm going to zoom in, what they're going to end up having is you get the one from mom. We're going to make its identical chromosome pair. And we get the one from dad. We're going to make its identical chromosome pair. But if I'm just going to zoom in, I want to zoom in just in that spot. What I'm going to start to see is unwrapped DNA. You're going to see all of the DNA in here. It's actually twisted ladder just with inside there. Two coils that actually make that up. And then if I was looking over at this side, you're going to see the same thing. It's going to be those same coils on that side. Okay. Let's move our way to the next slide real quick. There we go. All right. So what we're going to take a look at is how that DNA is actually going to be divided out into two. So if I have our DNA strand, Right? This is just a quick illustration of what a DNA strand might look like. Let's take a quick peek at this DNA structure. If I was to zoom in on just a little piece of that, what you're going to see are the basic monomers or the building blocks of what DNA is. And that's going to be composed of a phosphate group, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Now in a review, remember that the nitrogen bases can be one of four letters, A, T, C, or G. That sugar is always in DNA, deoxyribose, okay? and again, you have your phosphate group. Now, those things there, collectively, we call that guy a nucleotide. Okay, Nucleotide is the structure that is going to be considered a little picture that looks like an N. Nucleotide is the structure that is the building blocks of all the DNA. Now, remember, there's a guy that was named Erwin Chargoff who actually found out that there were certain letters that actually started to pair up next to each other. Now, when those letters actually pair up next to each other, they're going to be paired together by a particular bond, that bond being a hydrogen bond. And between an A and a T, you're actually going to see two bonds, and between the C and G, you're going to see three. So if I'm going to actually kind of zoom out of here a little bit, what you're going to end up looking and, and having is you'll have a phosphate group, the sugar, and the nitrogen base. And then this over here, if I say that that is an A, I'm going to have two bonds between the next nucleotide that's going to go here, which would be our T, and that's going to be then, again, paired up to another sugar and then to a particular phosphate group. So here are where you're going to see our nucleotide base structures working together. Now all you're going to be seeing is that DNA continually being created up and down. But as that DNA is being created in a particular formation, it's got to run in a, particular, in a rule that we're going to see here in a little bit. That rule is that it's got to run in a certain fashion. Now, if I go back to my nucleotide, I draw that out. I'm actually going to draw out positions of carbons. There's a carbon there, carbon there. The nitrogen base. Okay, again, remember the NB can be either A, T, Cs, or Gs. Those be in our letters that we're going to be dealing with. But we're going to be referring to this as considered as a prime or the number that we see in terms of our carbons. Now, if I want to draw those out, I'll just change the color. That is going to be considered our first carbon that's connected to the nitrogen base. That's our second. 
There's our third carbon. This guy is going to be important here in just a second. Here's our fourth carbon and our fifth carbon. So those in our structures of the nucleotide are the carbons that we're referring to. And when I see a phosphate group, it always is referring to it at the five prime or the fifth carbon end. Now, when I want to add a new nucleotide or a monomer to build DNA, I need to make sure that I build it in a way that I can, let's see, shrink this up just a little bit. I want to build it in a way that I can add a new one to an open area. And the only open spot that I have is at a three prime or the third carbon end. So if I have another nucleotide over here, it wants to come in, so it needs to find an open spot. It's going to land at that third carbon end, right? So if I quickly erase this, you'll see this occurring. I'll add on to that three prime end. All right. So I'm going to add a phosphate group there, and this is going to be considered a sugar to the next M2R nitrogen base. Now remember that this was our fifth carbon at the very stop, start, and I worked my way down to the third. All right, here's another five, all the way down to the three again. So if I want to draw a line, I can actually draw a line that I'm going from the fifth carbon all the way down to the third, always going to be in that direction. Five prime to three prime is the direction DNA is made, always in that direction. That would be the first rule. But the second rule that we have to be following is that DNA is anti-parallel. And what that refers to is that they're going to go in an opposite direction. So if I have one strand going 5 prime to 3 prime, I'm going to have the second strand going 5 prime to 3 prime in the opposite direction. So if let me grab a new slide here, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a phosphate group here and an nitrogen base. Another phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base, phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base. Notice that's an open spot. That's my open three prime. Up here, there is a phosphate, so that's my five prime. So that goes in this direction. That means over on this new strand, I've got to have the three prime over here somewhere and the five prime over here. So in looking at it, let's just make some letters. Let's say that this is going to be an A. This would be our T, and this would be a C. So if I'm going to put some bonds in between there, remember A and a T, there's going to be two bonds. In between a C and a G, there'll be three. Go back to another strand. So we're looking at, now, what it pairs with, pairs with an A is a T. What pairs with a T is an A. What pairs with a C is a G. The bonding next to that is going to be our sugars again. Sugar. And then again, we need an open three prime end. So what we're going to be seeing is the phosphates here and the phosphate there. All right? So our phosphates are open, but here I don't have one there. So I've got an open spot for them to actually be created. And that's where it's looking in here. So now the direction DNA in this way is going to be going that direction. Now that just gets us a start in where we're looking at in terms of our DNA replication. So as we move forward, we want to talk about how DNA is actually going to be replicated during the S part of interface. Remember, we went from the 46 chromosomes to 92. So what we're going to need to follow is three steps. The first step is with the use of the enzyme helicase. Helicase's job is to act and open up the DNA. The second enzyme we're going to be talking about is DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase's job is to put down the copies on the complementary base pair. So when it sees the A's, it puts the T. When it sees a T, it puts an A. When it sees a G, it puts a C. When it sees a C, it puts a G. All right, it's fairly straightforward. Now, the third one enzyme we're going to be referring to is ligase. Now, its job is to be the glue, and it's going to glue what's considered the leg and strands or Okazaki fragments that we'll see here in just a bit. So remember that those are the three steps that we're going to be referring to in here. Okay, so steps one, two, and three. So if we move our way into then these steps, we're going to look at DNA. Let's say that this is my five prime end. It's going to kind of open it up a little bit. There's my three. Get a new strand of DNA. We'll say that that's the three. Let's 
5. Now notice that, again, it's anti-parallel. They're going in opposite directions. Now, in order to maintain that anti-parallel direction, I need to be able to land on a particular site of the strand of DNA and only make a new strand in terms of our, one of our rules. DNA can only be made in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Let's take a look at our first enzyme. First enzyme is going to be right here. That's enzyme number one, which is helicase. That's going to help open it up. Now, if I take a look at just the red strand, look at just the red strand, I've got a three prime on the left and a five prime on the right. My ultimate goal is to make sure I stay anti-parallel. But remember that I can only make new strands of DNA in a five prime to three prime direction. So here, I need to maintain that. I land closest to the three prime, so my start of my new strand that I'm going to go is 5 prime, and I'm going to always make it in the 3 prime direction. So it's going to be going this, this way. If I look at the blue strand, notice that 3 prime is on the right-hand side, 5 prime is on the left. So I need to land on the right-hand side and make my new strand in that direction. Now what I've got here is it's considered a replication fork or a bubble. Now, this is just a tiny section of DNA. You're going to have multiple of these bubbles going through. So if you're actually drawing out DNA, you're going to have a bubble here, a bubble here, a bubble here, all the way down through your DNA strand. It's just, I'm going to illustrate and just zoom in on one of them. Okay, that's just kind of what that area is looking like. So now, if we had our actual strand of DNA, so I was just taking a quick peek at that DNA strand that we had before. Notice that again that we have our structure going in the newly created in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction to make sure I stay anti-parallel with those original strands. So if I'm zooming in and just the red strand itself, and I'm just going to create it and make it a straight line, that's what you're going to be seeing. And if I'm looking at that red, what I've got is somewhere in there around that spot here, is where I newly create a 5 prime strand. And I'm going to go all the way down continuously making it 5 prime to 3 prime. And this strand is known as our leading strand. Okay? Now if I look at the blue strand, our blue strand is going to be somewhere like in here, making it 5 prime to 3 prime. And somewhere around this region, closer to the 3 prime end, we start moving this way. Again, making sure we're anti-parallel, 5 prime to 3 prime. So this is our leading. What we're, we have to wait for is this actual structure, this section here, we we'll refer to it right there, has to be twisted open by helicase and DNA polymerase. Now in doing so, once this is forced open going nonstop, I have a small section on the bottom strand that can now be added onto. But one of our rules is that we can only make DNA in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So another new nucleotide could come in, but we, may, we have to maintain the certain direction that that one before was making. And so as this strand continues on its way, I can make another little section. And then as this finally finishes up, I can make the last little section. And those sections there are called the lagging strand or we can also call them the Okazaki fragments. Okazaki fragments, which are the individual structures collectively. Okazaki fragments that will eventually be glued together by the last enzyme. Again, glued together by that last enzyme, that last enzyme being ligase. And what's going to end up seeing is you will see this spot within there. They will eventually become one nice long strand. So when we are all said and done, if we had our 3 and our 5, which is our original, and so this is going to be anti-parallel with this strand, you're going to see then another 3 and 5 being identical. So what we will see are two identical strands of DNA that were put together in a 1, 2, 3-step process of helicase, DNA polymerase and ligase, ending with two complementary strands of DNA. That's where we'll stop today.